see it as a gift. Like, don't let it affect you. Don't let anything that is seen as, like, uncomfortable. said, like, legroom on things. Don't bring yourself down because of it. Like, accept, yeah, yeah. like, it is awesome being so tall. Like, there's so many positives. Um, cool. Okay, so maybe just chat about tall life then, I suppose. Hey. Yeah. Um, when did you first realize that you were tall? What age? Uh, I was six foot three when I was 13. So, like, I think that's like year eight in school. And you imagine, like, turning up to school, there's all of the new year yeah. sevens, so absolute tiny little kids. Then suddenly this giant walks in, he's talking to most of the teachers. <laughs> and I think my parents had it worse than anyone else because cause I was growing at such a rate. It was they had to buy new school blazers, trousers, shoes, everything. And then you had to stop buying shoes in the standard shops on the high street, probably age like 16. Because they only got up to size 13 mm. or size 12 for quite a lot as well. And then, yeah, it's pretty much the whole time growing up. It's You don't even have to have a lineup of, yeah. oh, it's the shortest. Like, well, you're centre back pretty much because <laughs> you are just always going to be the tallest by an absolute <laughs> mile. And that just became the thing. It was, I played football growing up, so it's like your goalkeeper. The, head, the crossbar was always below my head, really? so it's the running joke. Like, you're never going to get lobbed, all that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, it's... You spoke about clothes a lot there. Would you say that's the biggest tall people problem? Yeah. For you? I, I think it's what makes people stand out more as well. But like I feel like tall people from afar, like if you see a tall person down the street, unless they're extremely tall, you don't realise how tall they are until you approach them. Yeah. But if you see someone that then doesn't have clothes that fit them, you go, oh, that guy must be really tall. And then I feel a lot more confident wearing clothes that fit me rather yeah. than going out the same when I exercise, I'm one of these people that I, I can run with a straight face perfectly for a distance. And then when I'm struggling, it looks like I'm struggling. <laughs> I start to sort of hunch over and with the tops that don't fit, then the whole world that is behind you can see whatever you're wearing underneath yeah. pretty much, which then obviously isn't what you want to happen when you're no, exercising at the same not. time. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a big thing. Then pretty much the wardrobe went out the window and it's like, oh, I've got shirts that actually fit me now, have the arms on. Yeah baggy on here as well like that was the biggest thing because i like wearing shirts untucked but because they were baggy and not very long i felt like i had to always yeah, tuck them in, which makes every situation formal yeah and i'm not the most formal of people in the world <laughs> yeah, you can't really kick about with a tucked in shirt exactly trainers on, can you so. yeah fair okay um what advice would you give to your younger self or someone who's like 16 years old at school struggling with their height um someone that's so, tall, obviously yeah okay. see it as a gift like, don't let it affect you. Don't let anything that is seen as, like, uncomfortable, as I said, like, legroom on things. Don't bring yourself down because of it. Like, accept, yeah, yeah. like, it is awesome being so tall. Like, there's so many positives, but positives don't get shout about enough. It's yeah. always like, oh, you're really tall. That must, you must really struggle here, things like that. Yeah. But then I've had it multiple times because I love going to concerts that my friends can't see half the time at a concert when we're standing. But I've got, no matter where we are, I've got the best view. Yeah. And all you hear around you is, God, I don't want to stand behind that guy. Yeah. And I would take, like, some people would see that as being really self-conscious, being like, oh, no, everyone's looking at me, things like that. But I've just learned, yeah, people are looking, people are always going to be talking about the tallest guy in the room. Yeah. You just, that's who you are. I think we live in a world of negative people anyway. So yeah. yeah that, but, but yeah, certainly. Yeah. I, I find now that it annoys the people that I'm with more than it annoys me. Because, as you said, you just accept who you are accept that you are very tall and that the world is very slowly adapting to that world as well yeah yeah yeah. how's how's being tall differed your life how's it made your life better i think it's just opened so many different opportunities like but i grew up pretty much just standard teenage boy sort of thing plays football for his local team goes to school all that and then i think i was 17 this newspaper article came out that was called tall and talented which is a talent identification thing looking for I think 16 to 25 year olds over six foot three um who might be good for rowing or basketball with the vision to go to one of the I think it was the Rio Olympics wow. and I thought I'm reasonably sporty like I like running like playing football let's go and have a go got all the way through and then they said yep yeah, like we'll take you up to Sheffield center of excellence basketball I've never touched a ball in my life but they saw the height and the opportunity and 
clearly some level of athleticism. Yeah. And that changed everything because instead of staying at the school that I was at for sixth form, I then went off to a specialist like sports college, did my A-levels as well as playing basketball for about 20 hours a week, went straight into a national league team, traveled the UK. We went to Sweden, places like And again, you think the year previous, I was just that weird seven foot goalkeeper that was playing the under 18s football yeah. that no one really looked at. And then suddenly you're surrounded by people who don't talk about your height. Like being seven foot in basketball is the best thing and best advantage ever. Yeah. And then obviously from there, moved through, played that. And then the filming opportunity came up. And that was, it was another thing. That's a very, very long story. But we've with, got, the, we've got time. <laughs> It effectively started that a poster again went round my uni and was saying, we want people to, like students, be extras in this period drama. What went to uni in Bath, so obviously beautiful setting. But you need a proper headshot, proper full body, and then we'll put you through. So I went on there with all my housemates, did the photos, didn't hear anything because I just got my phone out, took a selfie, got my housemate to do full body. But the one detail that I put in that made me stand out was my height because I said, my name's Will. I'm 21, whatever, I'm seven foot tall. You've got the job, kind of thing. Like, maybe five months later, I got a phone call from one of these people that doesn't answer the phone to random numbers as well, but answered it, and they're like, oh, we want to put you forward for something. I said, yeah, why not? So actually got proper photos taken. And they're like, oh, can we go to Pinewood Studios and meet us in the Lucas building? And I was some a Star Wars fan now, but I wasn't sort of prior, so I knew of George Lucas and all that sort of thing, but didn't put two and two together. Turned up and suddenly I was in this room with five other people that were all six, ten and above, similar builds. And the criteria was pretty much your body has to be as close to the guy who plays Chewbacca's body as possible and you got the job. But I didn't need to stand there and make the noise. I didn't need to do anything. They just got a tape measure out and were measuring from like the top of your ear to the top of your head, like the diameter of your face, anything you can think of, they got a tape measure. And then two days later, they rang me and like, oh, yeah, we want you to body double for Chewbacca in The Last Jedi. And I was like, nice. where did that come from? Like, again, I'm just a uni student. Being seven foot, I would imagine. Ex exactly. Like, if I had just been lazy and filled in this form and said, I'm Will, I'm 21, here's my picture, you probably could have been able to tell from the full body that I was quite tall. Because yeah. take the full body and the headshot at a reasonable angle, my best mate had to stand on a chair. To take it because otherwise i would have been looking down the <laughs> chins would have been out everything would have been wrong there's a reason we're sitting here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was just absolutely crazy and that obviously opened eight months worth of driving home from uni going to pine studios yeah. they flew me out to ireland for a week to do filming out there for the start and the finish of the film got to meet all the cast everything and again once that then finishes you kind of sit back and go i am just will from high wickham like i am <laughs> not a movie star and not anything special but suddenly because of my height but especially for something like Chewbacca who is seven foot even without his massive platform feet and the giant head that you put on things like that it's just a completely different world and then it's the best icebreaker best story that you can whip out yeah. wherever you want absolutely yeah do you think that's your probably your crowning moment yeah like there's been a lot of cool things as I said playing National League basketball, yeah. going away with like England colleges, things like that is definitely up there on like the sporting achievements. But if someone was like, what's the best thing you've ever done? Like by a mile, that is it. And it's even got to the stage with even the people that I work with, my parents are like, it would only happen to Will, which to a lot of people would make you just sound like the luckiest guy ever. <laughs> but no, there is one, <laughs> there is one reason why these things open. And it, it also goes back to what we were saying earlier, like about accepting it. Because, mm -hmm. like, if I, a lot of people would see a newspaper article and go, why are they trying to get all these 16 to 25 year olds who are over 6'3 and semi athletic into one place? Like, I'm quite happy where I am, like, accept it. But if you take that step out, then it's like next level. It's yeah, awkward. definitely. Yeah. If you could change your height, would you? No. Like, even with the things like the leg room, the headroom, the everything, like, I feel like hitting seven foot was perfect because once you get close to it, you're like, I could squeak it out a little bit more, things <laughs> like that. But yeah, I've been seven foot now. I don't think I've grown since maybe 20. Yeah. So a good like 10 years. Yeah. 
And it's, as I say, it's just one of those things that I love going around. Like, I don't go out parading it, shouting mm-hmm. about it, but I'm also not afraid if someone comes up to me and wants to talk about it, I'm not going to dismiss them being like, yeah, of course. it's really rude sort of thing. Obviously, you do get those kind of people that <laughs> the first thing that comes out of their mouth. Well, though, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're already torn. Like, my name is also Will. It's like... <laughs> I'll throw something in at this point. You obviously just changed job. Yeah. <laughs> Does your height help you change jobs? It's definitely an icebreaker. So especially with COVID and everything, like you used to do face-to-face interviews. So if you were the interviewer, you knew what that person looked like from like head to toe as soon as you walked in the room. But to a lot of people, I am shoulders and a head. You have no idea that as soon as I stand up, I'm going to be massive. So it's funny, my old manager now that in between jobs did a leaving speech a couple of days ago and he literally said the first time i saw will was when he unraveled himself on the district line because he (laughs) he was standing there and then suddenly came out and was clamoring like stretching his (laughs) neck out all that sort of thing after being hunched over for a while on the train and because in the interview process and it's it's even on my cv that it's like body doubled for chewbacca you kind of assume that you're tall but there's a lot of amazement of when you first see a really tall person that the connector between your brain and your mouth suddenly just disappears and you're, like, you're really tall. And you're like, yeah. So like, I think my new job, because I've met up with them a couple of times to break the ice, I feel like they're in their polite stage at the moment where no one's actively out blurted it. But as soon as we get to know each other, it's going to be cut for, like similar questions to what, what we have here. But What's the weirdest thing someone said to you? Um... I thought there's a, like some of the questions start obviously there's the jokey question like what's the weather like up there then depending on people's interests it goes into like oh what sport do you play things like like genuine questions but I've even had someone come up to me before and say like what's your inside leg and I was <laughs> like I, 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 I don't know what your background is or why you're asking <laughs> <Yeah>. this <laughs> yeah it's not unless you're going to go buy me a pair of trousers from, from there, like I'm, I'm not going to answer that question <laughs> What what did it mean to you to find too tall? It was a massive confidence boost. And as I said, like, I'm not one that cares massively about my appearance 100%. Like, I've got to be primed and proper going out. But I also like for the big events, so like anniversaries, birthdays, even like going to the theatre, things like that, I like to look nice. And looking nice isn't just about wearing nice clothes. It's about wearing stuff that fits you, makes you feel yourself uncomfortable like a bit of an identity and yeah pretty much as soon as i found too tall and it had the range that was shirts t-shirts basically not that i would just buy t-shirts and then wear the world's baggiest shirts out again because yeah. it kind of defeats the object it was almost like forget everything that i've worn previously this is it now like I'm so, again basically yeah, yeah so comfortable in these clothes i know what i can get like i'm very fortunate as well that I have the same build as half the models on the website. So when I was getting to know Too Tall, it was like, oh, that says that model there is 6'10", and he weighs 108 kilos. So I'm close enough to that. Let's buy that, try it on. And then if there's something that doesn't fit, the returns and everything, like the easiest thing in the world. So yeah. you send it, you write your little note to be like, what's the reason why you're sending it back? It says, it doesn't fit, can I please exchange for a size up? Four days later, or whatever it is, ring on the door, so you close again, you can try it on. Like just yeah next level fair enough where where did you used to go before too tall <laughs> anywhere i I was a avid primark shopper okay because it was cheap and for, i refused to pay good money for something that doesn't fit it doesn't fit yeah basically so that i was just sense. like yeah just need a white t-shirt go to primark like seven pound yeah. whatever but again it'd be you could fit three in me in sideways <laughs> and it wouldn't be long enough so i'll just go out in it just accept it and probably try and hide it with a jumper that again isn't long enough not even on the sleeves and i feel like the sleeves are the one that makes it more noticeable you can kind of hide the length sometimes by pulling your trousers up really high or whatever yeah if something doesn't fit it doesn't fit so yeah there's a lot of primark other like high street shops are standards like top man whatever yeah and then yeah I, i would keep clothes for a long period of time because if i found something that nearly fitted I would wear that t-shirt to absolute death until I needed to get something else. Yeah. But obviously finding too tall, there's so many different things. It's like or I options don't, now, more yeah, range, yeah. Like I don't need to wear the same 
five t-shirts for the five days that I'm going to be at work. Yeah. So I've now got all of this and it probably saves a lot on the yeah. washing as well at home. Yeah. Do people, do people ask you much about your clothes that you wear? Only... You, you probably get the standard, where do you buy your clothes? Yeah. Right? But do, do they actually, do you get compliments or anything? The, the, I get a lot, especially in like the shirts and things like that, saying, oh, that fits you really well. Almost saying like, it fits you really well. I'm surprised sort of thing because right, a lot of okay. people don't know that there's clothing sites that cater to really tall people. Yeah. Like what I get a lot of is like mums in the supermarket who are just like, oh, my son's six, four and he's 15 years old. And like, where do you get your trousers from? Like, and I say, oh, I get them from too tall. And she says, oh, do they do like smart trousers? Because school uniforms yeah, are ridiculous, uniforms. things like that. I'm just like, here's the website, do it. And like, it helps that every time you do an order, <clears throat> you get the little business card that comes with it. And you can write your height on it and all that sort of thing. I've started handing them out to some, but even though the URL is one of the easiest things to remember, I'm still like, just in case you forget, take that or like, they'll write it down in their notes, whatever. Like I had it recently. There's one of the managers at my old work. She was like, oh, I went to a parents evening. And one of the mums was talking to her and said, oh, my son's really tall. He's on the rowing team, blah, blah, blah. And Sarah that I used to work with went, oh, I've got a guy who's seven foot who works, works with me. And he shops at two tall um here's his instagram handle like get your kid to message him on there he's a very nice guy he won't ignore you and I, i've never met this child before if that's <laughs> a safe way <laughs> it's probably a good thing <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah he, he just asked a million and one questions and it's even to the point where because he's now got access to my profile every photo i'm in i'm wearing two tall clothes so he'd be like oh yeah i can see that fits really well like what size do you get in that? All, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And the same with shoes. Like I did the standard UK size 15 men's trainers or something in yeah. the Google and you find all of these places. And I'm also one of these people that finds the quality of the website is a key driver to whether I purchase from them. There's probably no correlation at all for a lot of these places. But because I come from a digital marketing background, I'm like, oh, they put a lot of effort into the website, trust it. Happy days. And I love a good filtering system because there's no point in me looking at shoes that only have size 13s, for example. Yeah. So like get down the side, click size 15. Nice one. They're there again, colors, whatever. I think I still only own about five pairs of shoes, but four out of the five of them are from two yeah. yeah. And the other one is just my go-to running pair of trainers. Just, just for the purpose of the cameras, what's your measurements? So I am seven foot tall. What do I weigh now? I weigh. <laughs> what did you have for lunch? Christmas. <laughs> I probably weigh about 103 kilos. So just under 16 stone. I think it is. Mm. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah. Yeah. In, <laughs> like inside leg, 38, waist is 34. And my wingspan is exactly the same as my height. So that was oh. one of the key things, like with the whole basketball thing going through, they did all of the testing and then basically said, stick your arms out and we're going to measure that. <laughs> That's all so, they care about probably. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was one of the key things because my arms are always really long growing up as well. Yeah. So you can imagine like if your arms are going to be really long, you're going to shoot up and it's finding something that matched every part of you that was going to grow. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay. Are your parents tall? I know it's that, a cliche a question, ask, question, but <laughs> you've probably been asked plenty of times. But. Yeah, so dad's 6'3", and my mum's 5'10", okay. and then I've got an older sister who's 5'10", but mum's side of the family's got females who are 6'1", six six right. everything, like she's got very tall brothers, things like that, so there's height in the family, but I don't think there's been anything over 6'4", six 6'5", six yeah. which then, when I kept on growing, <laughs> they're like... Yeah, it's like, what, when you're what have you been eating? <laughs> <laughs> but as you said, it's it's a benefit, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And it's so it is a talking point because I am very much a extroverted introvert, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I do enjoy my own time, but once I feel comfortable with people, get talking to people, then you're lucky to stop me yeah. half the time. Yeah. And height is always a good way in. Obviously, if it's approached in a nice sort of way and absolutely yeah like, I don't, don't get me wrong i love a bit of a joke about it things <laughs> like that like go up my mates and any inconvenience i remember my first team trip because where i used to work every year they would take the whole team away wherever and the first year was we went to liverpool 
and we did this thing called sip and paint where you basically sit there have a drink whilst this lady teaches you how to paint a masterpiece by picasso or something and it never turns out like <laughs> it's on there and um but the door that they'd opened to let you in no I, I think people five six were having to duck a tiny bit to get through so i was standing there only known these guys for two months like, stand next to it. let me take a photo of you let me take a picture of you like crouching through it and I was like, I find that hilarious as well. Like, that's <laughs> not me being self-conscious or like yeah. insulted about it. It's like, no, that is quite funny because this door is just the most ridiculous thing ever to get yeah. into. It's one of those ones that's got like a giant door that clearly they open for deliveries and things like that. And the world's smallest person uh, door the in the one. corner. Yeah, and other ones. <laughs> so I'm just knock and open the big one for me to come through and then <laughs> shut it for everyone else and do that. Fair enough. Um, how tall is your partner? She's five six. Five, six, okay. Yeah, so uh, she would tell a lot of people that I catfished her because we met on Tinder. <laughs> and on Tinder, like, again, not ashamed of my heart, but I don't have many photos next standing next to my mates. Or I do, or I did, the next people I play basketball with who are obviously over a certain height. So a lot of my pictures were headshots or sat down like this, so you wouldn't know. And my bio literally just said, rather tall. Because I was like, <laughs> That's I, I, I don't, yeah, I, don't, I wasn't going to go. I'm seven foot tall, and my name's what, and I play football, and I do this, this, and this. I was like, just leave the mystery to when we meet up. And the ironic thing was, our first date was mini golf. <laughs> to sport that tall people aren't exactly. But I guess that is the running joke, isn't it? Yeah, Where, <laughs> it definitely is. Yeah, just imagine her horror. I got out of my car, she got out of her car, walked together, and she her necks gradually just cranking further up to be like. Okay, this guy is rather tall. <laughs> um, what what car do you drive? So I now drive a Tiguan VW. Okay. It's, Has it got enough legroom? Yeah, it, it was one of those things where first car I had a Corsa, and that was pretty much if you looked in from the window, it looked fine. But if you looked in from the passenger seat, my, the window was like here, and my knee was underneath it. <laughs> right. So it was typical like big man in the clown car, and gradually like got bigger and bigger cars and my thing was like i want to be able to drive three other people around i don't want to be like <laughs> yeah. oh yeah like i'll take my car you take your car i can take three people so one person in the front one person in the middle and one person behind the passenger because there's no room behind me yeah and like i'm i don't know if you're the same sit very like uprightish in the car mm -hmm. my wife likes to basically be in a sun lounger and have her arms <laughs> Lying stretched down. out like yeah. that so we have walls where we're just cranking the thing on the side <laughs> But that's like the first car that I've had where someone can sit behind me and then we can have like a full yeah. car of people. So I used to be the taxi man in my basketball team where it, even in the Corsa, we would be at college during the day and then have to drive I think it was maybe like half an hour from Henley to Reading to go and play in the evening. And there'd be me who was seven foot driving, then one of my mates in the front seat who was about six six, and then the three back seats was about a... Five ten, six foot six one, in a old style Vauxhall Corsa as well. Like the suspension on that car, must be, it must it's probably in the skin yeah. now. Yeah. Do you so think you were? Cool. Do you think you were conditioned to sitting upright because your legs needed more space to sit further back? Yeah, like, I, you I find myself slouching quite a lot. Like I'm slouching now, but I find by having to sit in a lot of places, you almost wedge yourself in that forces you to sit up but i'm also very conscious of my posture so i know it's probably the same for everyone but it's more apparent on tall people that tall people hunch yeah like do that so i try and think like shoulders back like the lower back there as well i've had so many problems like it's probably to do with my height but also because i played so much sports so yeah like knees everything you can think of and the back is like my key one to be like i need to preserve that because Otherwise, my wife, who complains that I do too much sport, will be pushing me around in a wheelchair when I'm 60 or something like that. Uh, fi finally, well, what's the best thing about being tall? I think there's loads of positives, to be honest. As I said earlier, it's all of the benefits of sports, things like that, that, that come with it. But I think it is that uniqueness. And it's, everyone has got something about them. Like obviously, for tall people, it's something a bit more obvious that you can see. But yeah, it's just going around, like, not not necessarily having to, like, adapt anymore. Yeah. Like, I feel like previously, especially at school, again, going into another story, like, my, when you had your exams, you all had your individual desks in banks and things like that. 
and you had to walk into this hall and look for your little ID card. But because I couldn't fit under a standard desk, they literally got two massive planks of wood and put it underneath a desk. So while everyone was going up and down, I literally just walked in and went, there's my desk over there. <laughs> and then sit there comfortably, do my exam. I remember, I think it must have been one of my final exams. I obviously got a bit overexcited. You finished your exams. Yeah. Brilliant. That went to turn like that. Whole table goes flying because it wasn't stapled onto these bits of wood. <laughs> Someone had just found two planks of wood somewhere. I thought, <laughs> let's raise it up. Let's make him comfortable. And it is, yeah, just fully about embracing yourself. Like people, if you are proud of how tall you are and live your life as a tall person, people will adapt to that. Like things are going to catch up and like two tools, the start of it, I think, like from a clothing point of view and yeah, transport, all the other things you see as a negative will catch up. Fair enough. Wise words. Well, thank you for coming here today. No problem. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure.